God. I just want to get this week over. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the only. I am still Hobo Tom. Oh, wow. What a... Oh, there goes the cat. I heard her running off somewhere. What a weird week it's been. I don't know. Maybe not so much for wrestling. But God, I'm so glad I go to my little mindless job tomorrow. Work for a few hours, get paid, and then just forget about the day. Come home, relax. Kind of what I did today, but that's okay. But I'm not here to tell you guys about my issues. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. And first off, as always, I do have to acknowledge anyone that leaves a comment on my page. Melissa Mahoon. You're a fucking cunt. I don't care if I get banned from YouTube for saying that. That's probably the truth. You can't diagnose people. What doctorate do you have? Oh, wait. I do have a doctorate. And a Master's of Science in Biology. And a Bachelor's of Arts in Environmental Science. That's right. I was a scientist for a while. Oh, I didn't know it did that. Oops. Fuck you. And I don't think I'd ever say this. I feel so bad for your dog, Sandy, that he has to deal with just a jackass like yourself. If my cat was ever sick, there's a reason why I work two jobs. At least I would have the money to take care of her. Oops. Oh, and, by the way, you said nothing constructive. But you still made a comment, though, so you get your own shout-out. Geez, I'm glad I don't have to go up to Palm Coast anymore. I swear to God, I'm never dating anyone else from there. Well, something is wrong with the one in Florida. You know what? Because it's red wine from Pizza Friday, I'm going to drink my red wine instead. Ah, there we go. But wait a second. This show has never been about me. This show is about pro wrestling. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Wow, it was an it was a weird show. SmackDown. SmackDown follows Raw, where if Raw's not great, SmackDown is so so. And we had an, another one of those shows. And it starts off with Roman Reigns uh, and Paul Heyman. They start off with a promo. Jay Uso comes out. Then Baron Corbin comes out. And then Sheamus, the Belfast brawler, comes out. So yeah, so we know where we're going to see. At least for the main event for the show. Then we have Jeff Hardy. The first match of the night is Jeff Hardy taking on AJ Styles. And of course, Zami, Sami Zayn has to come out. I don't know. More so and more so. I think he's the true leader of Retribution. Because he does look like, um, oh, what's his face? Chavo Guerrero? I, I, I forget offhand, but he was that one revolutionary. He's good. I thought I looked scruffy during the coronavirus thing. This is nothing compared to what he has. But so this is our first match. Jeff Hardy taking on AJ Styles. Oh, wait a second. Before I do anything first. A little tribute for 9-11.
And again, the show is going to mirror WWE a little bit, where it takes me four minutes and 50 seconds to talk about wrestling. So our first match, we have Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles. Um, it's, it's Again, Sami Zayn interrupts. I thought it was going to be a quick match, and it actually was, which is not good. I don't know if this is punishing AJ Styles for the things he said on Twitch, the comments he made about Paul Heyman. I don't know. WWE sometimes is petty about that. We'll see. Uh, starts off. Again, Jeff Hardy is distracted by Sami Zayn. He gets jumped from behind by AJ Styles. However, when AJ Styles goes for a splash into the term, into the corner, eats the buckle. Also eats a twist of fate. But Jeff Hardy missed a twist of fate. And then we went to our first commercial break. And I said, you know what? I just came from the gym. I actually, I actually did get a lot done today. I'm kind of shocked about that. I'm going to go take a shower. I come back from said shower. Match is over. Um, there were a whole bunch of technical issues, so I watch it for free, though. So I, I really can't complain. Uh, Jeff Hardy, he got jumped by Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn interferes. Jeff Hardy retains the belt. I'll tell you what, this was way too short. This is going to be that ham sandwich of a match. And my first thought was, did Jeff Hardy try to up his brother Matt Hardy from AEW? No. That's not good. That was real. He knew it was real. Because Matt's wife, Rebby, was in the crowd, and she had that look, you're coming home with me now. But yeah, that's that's a whole that was a whole other show. I did that on Wednesday. And then Sammy and Jeff, they start to brawl in medical. And we have the Lucha, Lucha, Lucha house party. That was, I'll tell you what, say what you will about the Lucha style wrestling. It's fun. Energizes you, makes you happy. Uh, so we have Lucha House Party taking on Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Cesaro starts off very classically a tie up, collar and elbow. He delivers some stiff knees into Grand Metal League. However, Grand Metal League says he has his kicks. His rope walking is amazing. I'll tell you what, they must really have that Amway Center climate controlled because AEW is having. All kinds of issues with ropes, condensation, sweat. Bravo, Amway Center. Bravo. You do it right. That's all I can say. Um, they are having the Royal Rumble somewhere else. I don't know where else. They could be coming here to Daytona Beach. <laughs> they could have Thunderdome. At the Daytona One Center. Because I think there, I mean, there is a Veterans Memorial Arena. Because I know Jacksonville, oh, it was also good to watch Monday Night Football. But I'm getting too off talk, but I'll get about that in a second. So let, let me focus and get back to the match. Um, Grand Metal League was amazing. The slippy stuff off the ropes. That's why I got on the tangent. Sorry. Um... And there, Kalisto, he does, he does the up on the shoulder splash. Still amazing. I don't care what you say. To be able to stand on someone's shoulders and then jump on another human being. <sighs> Bravo. I mean, this was actually, I think, the best match of the night. It was. Um, so from there, Cesaro gets tagged in. He does a clothesline. Shinsuke Nakamura sets up Kalisto for the knees. Again, Cesaro, he does that menacing neck crank. The way he positions the arm and his own body really makes like he's trying to break someone's neck. That's impressive. Again, there were quick quick tags by the heels. Really good tag team chemistry between Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. However, the Street Profits were up in the VIP section of the Amway Center, probably in one of the um, corporate suites. I'm sure WWE can, can say something about that. 
It wasn't the corporate suite, so it was definitely the Bud Light Zone. But they were having their own party, and that distracted Cesaro enough where he got rolled up by Kalisto, of all people. I'll tell you what, that chick in the black dress? Yeah. I'm a single, sweetie. But for the most part, I mean, this was a good, solid cheeseburger match. Then Lucha House Party parties with the Street Profits. And hey, there ain't no party like a Street Profits party. The Street Profits party don't stop. Ah. Then we have Bailey come out. Um, God, she's boring now. They turned Bailey from interesting heel to boring heel. And then when they announce, and then they of course announce the woman's four way to see who would face Bailey at Night of Champions, which is two weeks from Sunday. Which, by my calendar, and depending on WWE math, trust me, my days are so screwed up now. This, this one job has so many numbers, so many abbreviations. It's not this weekend. It's either the 20th or the 27th. I, I give up which. Mainly because the month of August had two pay-per-views and that kind of screwed me up for a while. I do apologize for that, folks. But with this, um, it was Tamina, uh, Tamina versus Nikki Cross versus Alexa Bliss versus Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans comes out. God, what a milk ass she has. Um, she takes off her shirt, throws it into Nikki with a dress no cells. Um... Again, Tamina very much. I still forget when Young Blood was made. I forget. And again, you out there in the YouTube audience, you can always correct me. Um, Young Blood was, I want to say, early 80s. Kind of around, I'll have to ask at work. Kind of that 82-ish feeling to it just based on what she was wearing. And yeah, if if you've seen Youngblood, you know exactly what scene I'm talking about. I want to say Keanu, I want to say Keanu Reeves was actually in that movie. Like, that was one of his first roles. That's going back a while. Enough said about that. I'll bring that up at work tomorrow. Because it should be a semi-slow day. We'll see. Um, yeah, Nikki got jumped by Bailey at the outset, so Nikki's all beat up. Alexa Bliss tries to make the save, however, Lacey Evans just, t Tamina just shows up in the ring, normal entrance. Lacey throws a, her skirt at Nikki Cross. I'll tell you what, I'm not a fan of Lacey Evans, but Lacey Evans did that interesting choke where Tamina was in the corner and somehow. Lacey was on the outside, got her leg over the top rope, and started to choke her with her calf. I'll say this. That was interesting. I will always applaud different things. So, so good to you, Lacey Evans. At least you're not boring. And Lacey Evans, I'll tell you what. She still has one of the best moonsaults ever, though. Um, so and again, that was an interesting choke by Lacey Evans. Alexa Bliss and beats up Lacey. On the outside, um, then to me, just just decapitates poor little Alexa. I, you never realize how tiny Alexa Bliss is until a normal woman like Lacey Evans and Tamina stand next to her. Tamina's looking. Oh, yes. I'll applaud Tamina for this. Hey, hey Tamina, I'm single too. But yeah. Tamina's looking better now that she changed outfits. She looks less like a Klingon. Again, minor little quibble I've always had. But yeah, she clotheslined poor little Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss looks so tiny. Nikki Cross is just short looking. Nikki Cross, she looks like one of those people you do not want to feed coffee to. She's a little bit too much on the hyper site. Uh, and then Tamina hits a splash on Alexa. 
Lacey Evans, the heel gets gets kicked after the fact. Uh, Nikki tries to sleep her on Tamina. She gets in the ring, and then some forearms. Nikki hits the, the double cross body to the outside on both Tamina and Lacey Evans. And then Alexa, Alexa, sister Abigail, Nikki, after a, the kiss? I wanted to see some tongue action. But that's okay. Yes, it was just, it was a shock. Again, Alexa teasing the Sister Abigail stuff. Oh, yeah. You don't know what's going to happen when the Macho Man shows up. Yeah. Macho Man still one of my favorite wrestlers. Do my best impersonation of him and, and Angry Vince. I can't do any others. Except for Ric Flair. Woo! High styling. Woo! Profile. Woo! Limousine riding. Woo! Kiss stealing. Woo! Son of a gun. Woo! Up all night. Woo! Okay. It's Ric Flair, though. Then, let's see, the crossbody, the forearms. He's the sister Abigail. Lacey Evans then does the wrecking ball um, Bronco Buster. Again, I'll tell you what. For all the bad things I say about Lacey Evans, she has one of the best moonsaults when she actually hits it. Again, bravo, Lacey Evans. Bravo. You've mastered the moonsault. Thumbs up to you. Um, however, Nikki uh, comes comes back. She has a cross body on to someone. And it's like, huh? Nikki Cross wins. She's going to challenge Bailey. Ooh. Ah. I want to know. Would you be my girl? Let's see. Let me pick this up. It's fluttering. I thought it was like. A cat or something. There we go. Stick you there. But yeah. So, so that's interesting. And there's some new blonde. She looks. I'm trying to think. What blondes are there. In pro wrestling that could come to the WWE. Tessa Blanchard had, had black hair. She's not going to bleach that easily. Period. Unless it's a repackaging of Mandy Rose, but the body type was a little bit different. She looked almost like, oh, um, what's her face, Reynolds? God knows it's, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not Sunny. Um, it's not Marlena. I also don't know who she, who it is though, because I can't think. She's the only blonde in NXT. There is no true blonde in NXT that would be called with the main roster. I'm trying to think, but there is some new blonde-haired woman. I don't think it's Peyton Royce. She looks a little too curvy to be Peyton Royce. That that makes sense, but that's not right. It's not Lana. I'm trying to think, who else has blonde hair? I'll come up to next, like we'll come up to WWE. If you guys know out there in the YouTube universe, just let me know. I, it escapes me. And then we had Otis versus John Morrison. Uh, Morrison beat gets beat up out of the ring. Uh, Miss steals the lunchbox. Otis hits the big elbow, and I won't even tell you the rest of the match. That's it. Can of soup. Oh, if you didn't notice the, that the woman's far away, it was a cheeseburger match, but that's okay. So I'll... The magic of editing! Um, they go in, Miz found a lunchbox, and literally it is a lunchbox. Because Otis switched... This is becoming interesting because I like the fact that Otis is staying one step ahead of the Miz and Morrison. Eventually, it's going to catch up with them, though. 
So we'll see what happens. Then we have the Firefly Funhouse. And I'll tell you what, who's the new person? I wanted, I, I so much wanted to see Sister Abigail. Wait, there's Sister Abby, though. So, I, I mean, I wanted to see Alexa Bliss there. Um, if not someone, if not, she's like, who could it be? Who from the Indies? I'm not going to have her. I'm not going to have Priscilla because of the tampon incident. They're not going to have Tessa, per se. I don't know. I guess we'll see next week. But um, they introduced a new puppet, um, or the, a new character, Pascal the Parrot. And Bray Wyatt realized that he didn't put any holes in the box. The parrot's dead. The one who's most happy, Mercy the Buzzard. Buzzards eat dead things. Power to him. And said there's Wobbly Walrus. Because <laughs> Vance, Devil Vance came out. Oh, Devil Vance is such good shit. Even though they did bleep out shit, which is weird. Um, they have the Wobbly Walrus. <laughs> Everyone knows who that is. That's Paul Heyman. Wow. They're just poking fun at everyone. I'm sure Paul Heyman even laughed, laughed at himself. Not what people were looking for, but it was okay. Because Wobbly Walrus is now Bray Wyatt's manager. Oh, Firefly Funhouse is one of the best things SmackDown has going for it. Then we have the main event, King Corbin and Sheamus versus Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. Starts off really on a two-on-one handicap by J and Jey Uso gets beat up a lot. Uh, Sheamus hits the white noise. Jay, um, again, Jey Uso just gets beat up a lot um, by both. Baron Corbin didn't do much this whole match. It was mainly Sheamus. Uh, Two-on-one on Jey Uso. Sheamus hit the white noise. Then once Jey Uso starts to get his comeback, he takes out Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin's incapacity on the outside. Sheamus is beat up. All of a sudden, now Roman Reigns shows up. Makes a blind tag. Jey Uso does, does the big splash, which, which he's obviously learned as a part of the Samoan dynasty. And Roman Reigns comes in, blind tag, Spears gets the one, two, three. That was it. Um, really, all it needed to be shows Roman Reigns he's going to show up when he wants. He's going to do what he wants. It makes sense for his character, especially with Paul Heyman there. And also the look when Jey Uso like, raises... Raises both their hands. Roman Reigns just like, dude, let go of me. I won that. So yeah, this is interesting. It does set up for a clash of champions. It will be interesting to see what they do next week, if not the following week, to see how they follow up and how, how they build this. I am... Not happy with the fact that they're giving their programs subtitles. Um, the in your the WWE Raw that's in your face, yeah, doesn't work. The uh, champions, Clash of Champions, gold, gold, whatever is okay, it, it makes somewhat sense. Um, overall, wasn't bad. It was a ham sandwich of a show. And that's it for the week. I actually get to sleep and not worry about stuff. All I have to do is wake up tomorrow before 11 a.m. And I'm good for a rare change this week. I don't know. It must be that. Is it a full moon? No, that was last week. I don't know. Again, if you ever visit Florida and never drink the water, just partake of the delicious red wine. So I do plan on seeing everyone Monday. Um... If not, I do have to make, I might have to make an emergency trip up to Jacksonville. 
we'll see. So I don't, I should be back at least to do the video part.